Hello, Hello, Jennifer Weiner. We're yes. at Book Expo America. Yes, it's it, huge. It is. Everything is happening. It is so cool to have you on our set. I am so happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, we, we were talking just now off camera about your brand new book mm -hmm. for middle grade readers called yeah. The Littlest the Bigfoot. The Littlest Bigfoot, yes. It's your first uh, book for young readers. Yes, it is. And after years of having my daughter say, when can we read your books? And me saying, what books are Never, or, you know. You know what does good in bed mean? And I'm like nothing. <laughs> yeah. Just just move along. Move Mom nothing just to, writes nothing notes. Nothing to see here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like now I can be like something to see here. See, read my book. Yeah. Finally. And you, and you talked about in the in the uh, beginning of the book, or you write a little note to the readers, and you say how this is the book that you always wish you had when always you were younger. Always I had when I was a kid. And yeah, because I mean, I I was. Um, I was saying earlier there was a children's book breakfast and I was talking about how every 12-year-old girl at one moment or another in her life feels like a monster. And so I wanted to write about, you know, there's a human girl who feels really out of place in her skin. There's a little Bigfoot girl who feels really out of place in her world, in her tribe. And they're each sort of yearning for something. And I feel like the book is a little bit of a road map for girls, you know, the kind of thing that I do wish that I'd had that sort of said, okay, like, here's how to be different, but still feel okay. Yeah, let's talk about the characters a little yeah. bit. Alice and Millie. Alice and Millie, okay. They're both sort of misplaced. They're yep. looking for their place. Yep. They're uncertain of who yep. they are. Yep, yep, yep. Um, they have I mean, different I, personalities, each one of them, but let's explain who they are. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't even remember who said this, but it's sort of classic advice to writers is you have to start your book off with your characters wanting something. So we start off with Alice, and Alice is standing on the corner of 89th Street and 5th Avenue. She's waiting to be picked up and taken to her eighth boarding school. Right, and she wants shuttled to, about. Yep, and she wants to disappear. And she just doesn't want to exist in the physical world. She's a bigger girl, she's got crazy hair, she's got big hands, she's got big feet, and she just wants to like make herself as small as possible to the point that no one even sees her. And then you meet Millie, who is a year or a Bigfoot, as a big we foot, a Bigfoot right. as we you call toss them. A Bigfoot into the story, which uh -huh, we was announcing right. for Right, didn't time. see that happening. <laughs> um, and and Millie is all she wants to do is figure out how to look human, how to get rid of her fur. She thinks there's a way to do that. How to get rid of her fur and how to go be in the human world. And the only time of the year she gets to do that is Halloween, where the Bigfoots go trick or treating dressed as Bigfoots or, you know, everybody thinks she's an Ewok because she's tiny. So she had to like figure out what an Ewok was, but they yeah. get to like go to a town and like get candy and say trick or treat and like look into people's kitchens and see how they're decorating and stuff. And like, that's like the high point of her year is like being out in the human world and it's all that she wants. And so we have two girls who each want something, who each feel out of place and they're desperately lonely and they're looking for a friend. And so I got to write about loneliness, about friendship, about finding someone who gets you, yeah. and about like fitting in in the world, which and are all like so big things. so many people at the, you know, that the age of your daughters, yeah. that is so many young girls and at that age. And boys too. And there is a boy in this book. I, I want to make that clear. Like nobody's going to like get their period just from reading it. There is a boy. And he is also, he's the youngest of three. He's got two like superstar big brothers. One's an athlete, one's a genius. And then there's poor Jeremy, who's just this like ordinary, ordinary kid. And all he wants to do is prove that Bigfoots are real because that's how he's gonna make a name for himself and sort of make a place for himself and his family. Well, you also, there's a lot about body image in here body too, which image. is another really yeah. important issue for young girls, yeah, especially, I mean, but boys too. Yeah, and, and it's always, I mean, it's been something I've talked about in fiction, it's been something I've talked about in essays. Um, girls learn to hate themselves really, really early, and Alice has learned to hate herself. I mean, she, her mother is a master, you know, her mother is this like tiny, tiny woman who's always on a diet, and she's straightening her hair, and she's putting on false eyelashes, and Alice, Alice just gets the message that like everything about her needs improvement. and has a mother who's basically devoted her entire life to like self-improvement and Alice is sort of, she's at the age where I think she's thinking about like, is this going to be me or am I going to find another way to do it? Yeah, and you, you know, th these are all issues that you're writing about now for younger audiences, yeah, uh -huh. but they're issues that you've addressed and written about as yes. an adult writer too. Yes, for big people. Yeah, and uh -huh. so you found a way to sort of translate this. Mm -hmm. Is it, 
is it important for you to sort of, did you realize at some point that like you actually had to go earlier in the life, in the, you know, well, you know, to it's really like, get to this issue? I, I wanted there to be some correctives for the things that girls see every day. And I have daughters and they're 13 and eight. And you know, I, I monitor, like I'm so careful, like there's a million like internet blockers in the house, like they can't even like Google me because of my last name. It comes up like oh, yeah. no. That's but right. uh, you know, I, all they see are sort of thin, white, pretty girls, you know, sort of with a very narrow definition of pretty. And I wanted to sort of put a book out there that says, you know, hey, there's lots of ways to be beautiful. There's lots of, you know, there's different kinds of bodies, there's different kinds of hair, there's different kinds of skin, and there's different ways to be beautiful, you know, because I think that is, you know, if I can just be a little tiny bit of a voice in their ear saying you're really okay, maybe they'll listen. Yeah. That you're, is my hope. You're writing, a, you also have a book of essays coming out called uh -huh. The Hungry Heart. Hungry Heart. You've yeah. been a spokesperson for so many causes and issues. Yeah. You're not afraid to go out there. No. You're, you have very strong opinions. I do. And yeah. you are sort of paving the way for other people to oh, go there too. That's so nice of you to say. I but mean, it's a burden also. Yeah, you know, it's like you, you take some heat for it. I mean, like when, I mean, I'm constantly reminded of this. It's like I'll publish something and somebody will like write something that'll be like, yeah. And, I'll, and, and my husband will say, you know, when you have opinions, not everybody agrees yeah. with them. And it, yeah. it's true. But I like, I mean, there was no Vita count in the world before 2010 when Jody Picot and I and lots of other writers started talking about like, why is it always the white literary men who are getting all the coverage? Why is it the same people over and over? Why do places like The Atlantic and Harper's and The New Yorker publish so few women? You know, and then people started counting and realized like, yeah, this is a real thing. Um, let's figure out why it's happening. Let's figure out maybe, can we do something about it? You know, and I, I feel like I'm lucky enough to have a platform. I mean, I have readers, I have followers on social media, I have people who listen to me. And, you know, what do I want to do with that platform? Like, do I want to publish recipes? Do I want to publish, like, pictures of my kitchen? Well, sometimes, maybe. Yeah. But I want to talk about, like, okay, like, let's see if we can make the world a little more fair for all of our daughters and all of our sons. Mm -hmm. But that also means that you um, get singled out when people uh -huh. want to talk about the issue or yep. when other authors, you've had yep. some high profile The last, last name doesn't help. Yep. Last name oh, never well, helps. That's true. It's so, it's so sad. It's idea, like a ready made. It's like Jennifer Weiner. It's like, oh wow, really? Like you have an MFA and that's the best you can do? Like go back to school. Well, it's a, it's a whole other element to your writing career. Mm -hmm. And I think that that must have been fodder obviously for these essays. Well, it's funny, the New Yorker profiled me a couple of years ago and the author said I was sort of an unlikely feminist enforcer. And I was sort of thinking about that and I'm like, well, in college, I was leading demonstrations about all male eating clubs at Princeton. It's sort of the same fight that Harvard is now having with their secret societies that are all male. And it's like, well, this really wasn't unlikely. I was raised by a very progressive mom who had very strong views and who sort of said like, when you see something, say something. Like if there's injustice, you don't just sit there and you know publish your recipe for like vegetable pate or whatever. Like you say something. You say this isn't right. You know, and whether it's like your book specifically or like women in general. Like you know, there's a big picture problem, and I feel you know for whatever reason feel compelled to get out there and talk about it. Yeah, and it goes down even to the categories of your writing. A lot. I mean, you. Chiclet. There was this chiclet thing, chiclet, and now right. we seem to have really settled on women's fiction. Right, commercial, commercial women's fiction. Yeah, maybe it's commercial. You know, and, and with men, it's just books. Fic yeah, it's just fiction. Or, books, yeah. just fiction. Novels. I mean, there is, there's, there's women's fiction, which we talk about all the time. There is no men's fiction. That's just fiction. You know, and that's just wrong. That's just not cool. Yeah, Jane well, Smiley is not writing women's fiction. It's funny because some people, I think, appreciate the fact that it's not called chick lit anymore. At least there's uh -huh. something else. That, God, you know, the, like we finally, transition. like, we, we've, we've made it, like, yeah. at 46, I'm not a chick anymore. Thank you, Jesus. But, yeah. you know, it, it's like, why was there that label in the first place? Like, right. why were we so dismissive about stories about young women? And young women, I mean... And, and some of these books were better than others, and some were a little more breezy and a little more humorous. But ultimately, they were all, I think, like very heartfelt stories about how does a young woman find her way in the world? And 
when you dismiss all those books as chiclet, what you're saying is like, that is not a very important question to me. And these aren't very important people to me. Yeah. And I believe women's stories matter. Yeah, and they do. And they do. And now you've written this beautiful, how do you find your way in the world how story you for find young your way? readers. It's actually got a map right in the front, which yeah. I think is just like so like on the nose. Cause like, I'm hoping that for girls, this is going to be like a map and it's going to show them like, okay, here's your way out. Well, I hope that us nofers, those people in the, yes, the Bigfoot nofers. community who are human, mm -hmm. um, all adopt it, read it, and teach it as well. That is my plan. Yeah. That's my plan. Thank you well, so, so much. Thanks so much for this being here. Lovely. Jennifer Weiner, so nice. Woo. Yeah, thanks for being here. Of course.